Hey everybody, Lawrence here. Welcome to Dirty Basement Terrain. What are we going to be talking about in this episode? Dungeon tiles. Not necessarily a giant one like this, and not necessarily made out of X XPS foam that you get from your standard hardware stores or wherever. What I do want to show you is a method that is very friendly to beginners, doesn't require a whole lot, some simple tools, does not require a hot wire cutter at all. I want to show you my way of making small, simple little tiles that are incredibly modular and will be easy to make. Do you have to make it the way I do? No. But I'm going to show you how easy my way of doing it. Stick around. Enjoy. Here I'm using a piece of ready board foam core from the Dollar Tree. The easy peel stuff. And right now I just want to try and get a straight edge on one side. So I'm using my ruler or my T-square to mark it out. And now I'm using my open knife to gently cut through it. Don't want to go through a whole way through on one slice because you'll wind up tattering it. And it'll, well, it won't look good. You want a nice straight edge. And of course now you got to mark out three inch segments because we're making three by three inch tiles here. And now that I've got my marks out, I'm tracing out a line for, of course, the three inch by three inch tiles. Of course, now I've also got to mark out three inch, the three inch segments in the other direction. And this is a pretty simple process. And once we get all the lines marked out, I think we're, we're going to wind up with nine to tiles total here. And so I just gently pull the blade along the lines if you need help keeping on the lines just grab like a metal ruler to help and hold it down to help you keep your lines straight but again you don't want to go try and force the blade through the foam because you might wind up with tatters and you don't quite want that yet <laughs> but again Gently, if you got to go multiple times through, and try not to cut through the paper because that is, will actually help keep stuff steady. You just want to go deep enough to get through the foam. Of course, here I'm just cutting or marking up some three inch by three inch squares on some graphics medium chipboard. It's the stuff you find on the back of like legal pads or you know notepads. The reason I'm making the three by three inch squares as well with this stuff is because the foam that we're using is just too fragile to be able to be pra practical to use. So it needs something to help sturdy it up, and that's what this is going to be for. But again, using a little plastic T-square t ruler that I have, it's pretty easy to mark them out. And again, I'm going to be using my uh, Ulfa knife, and I'm not cutting the whole way through at one shot because I, I want clean edges. And for, for me, this works. I don't like using scissors to do this because it, it'll curl the edges up a little bit, so that might be something to avoid. Again, I'm just going to cut this up until I have nine squares that I can use for my tiles. Now this step is pretty self-explanatory and easy. I'm going to be gluing the foam to the graphics medium chipboard. I'm just brushing on some Aliens Tacky Glue 
or you can use any PVA you want, but I, I just prefer Aileen's for when I need to use PVA. Just brush it on and then kind of like sandwich it together and try and get it, you know, as even as po you possibly can. And that's it for this step. Now, if you got any warping, which I didn't, but it is a possibility. You might get some warping from the drying of the glue from the previous step. If that happens, just flip it upside down to, to where the chipboard is showing up and then coat that upper coat that side with a either some PVA or some Mod Podge. Give it 24 hours to dry and it'll go straight then. Or at least it should. Now here as you can see I'm just marking out one inch segments on the foam and just drawing lines so you know I have the three inch by three inch tile here. Now using a massively expensive sculpting tool of a pencil <laughs> um, just go along gently a, a couple times with the line so it makes an indentation for each individual tile. You don't have to press too hard, just you might have to go a couple times, but you just want to get an indentation into the foam. Now, once you actually get the indentation done for the actual lines, this is where you go along and basically make a few random cracks and tiles if you want to. You don't have to, but I think dungeon tiles should have a few cracks at least. <laughs> but Use your pencil, make a few jagged lines till you're happy with how it looks, and that's it. And here we're using a wadded up ball of foil, and we're just rubbing it in, or rolling it into the foam, and it gives it like a stone texture appearance. It's cheap, quick, and easy, and for something like this, using the foil ball technique is the best way to do this. At least I've found so. And see? It looks great. And here I'm using a mixture of black craft paint and Mod Podge and giving the, the foam part of the tiles a complete coat. This will give the foam tiles a little bit more durability and with the pa black paint mixed in with it, you'll get a nice like primer coat as well. So two steps in one. And here I'm going to be going with my go-to color for stone dark blue gray from apple barrel just going to give it a hundred percent coverage on the foam part and that's just going to be my base color for my tiles now this step you can absolutely skip if you want to but i like to add random strikes stripes of color into the stone just to go because stone is not just gray there's color into it i'm using Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber, Deco Art's Rookwood Red, and Deco Art's True Ochre. Like I said, I'm just adding little random streaks of color throughout the tile. You won't really see it too well when you're done, but it will be there just a little bit, and it'll give you some visual interest once they're all done. Again, you don't have to do this step, but I like doing it because I just, I. I Thing. it just looks good now here i'm going for a mid-tone gray uh apple barrels pewter gray i just want to get like an 85 percent coverage with this basically you want to get some paint on then oh your brush and then get a decent some of it off i said you do not want to go for 100 percent coverage with this maybe like 85 percent just like make sure you leave the cr deepest re the lines for the tiles and the cracks you don't want paint going into that i said around 85 percent coverage and here i'm going to be doing a highlight color onto the t aisles i'm going to be using apple barrels granite gray which is a light gray i'm going to be dry brushing it on this is where you get some paint onto the brush and then you want to get most of the 
the, the paint off of the brush itself by wiping it on some cardboard, a paper towel, whatever. You don't want a lot of paint on the brush because you're just going to be going over what you're painting really lightly. And you can do this actually pretty fast and it'll actually wind up still looking really good. But with some practice, you can get this done quick, easy, and it'll wind up looking really good in the end. You could actually call your tiles done at this point, but these are some extra steps I like to take just to give it that little extra. I'm going to be giving my tiles a dark brown wash, which I make. Don't use your the washes for your miniatures. Save those for your miniatures. I'm going to be giving it 100% coverage on this. It'll the, Using the dark brown will give it like a dingy, dirty look, and that's just my preference. That's why I do it. I'll leave a link down in the description of how to make your own washes. Now you can see how it looks once the wash is dry. And if you want, you can leave it like this. But I'm going to be bringing up the edges, edge highlighting again. I'm doing exactly like I did before the wash wash and I'm just going to be dry brushing on apple barrel granite gray the same light gray I used before maybe not quite as heavy I just want to bring up some of the edges and still leave the wash in the deep recesses and whatnot because I still want it to look have like a dingy dirty look that's just my preference Now I'm going to be adding some moss to the tiles just for some visual interest or in the green contrast to the gray tiles themselves. Like I said, it, just to bring it up a little bit aesthetically, um, I, make my, I make my own moss paste. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description again as well for making moss paste, or at least my method of it. But again, I don't want you to... I personally don't want to overdo it. I'm just adding small bits of moss in the cracks here and there. Just, like I said, just for a little bit of visual interest. Again, th this is a step you could completely skip, but I'm going to do it because <laughs> it's my terrain. So, But no, I like it for the contrast. And here you can see these tiles are very modular. You can put them in all different shapes, of whatever you want for however your dungeon looks. And they look good. And they're really simple to make. Hey everyone, if you made it this far, it means you watched to the end. And as always, I do appreciate that. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more, click subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment wherever. I still don't know where that is. Up there, down there off to whatever side leave a comment if you want to if you want to get a hold of me directly come to the discord page there's a link to it in the about tab of the dbt page lots of people there would love to hear from you remember everybody when you're making your terrain the only person you got to worry about is you because it's your terrain